All right, guys, how's it going? This is BBB coming at you with Boomer. Hi, guys. And this is take about 14 of part two of this video. Uh, hopefully you've seen part one. If not, um, you should, because we're just going to jump right in here in part two. And uh, we're at about 22.10 in our recording with a queen and a nine of diamonds, which is where we left off last time. So yeah, like I said, hopefully you guys have all seen part one and you're familiar with the opponents, the HUD setup and all that, blah, blah. Uh, Boom, are you good to go? Yep, good to go. All right, go ahead and uh, lead the way here as far as the playback and such, and let's talk about this hand a little bit. Yep, uh, Jebby Vitter's just cold, cold mud raise, which is pretty much standard for him now. Yep. Um, cold in the big blind. Flop's pretty much empty and it's standard C bet for me, I think. Uh, the turn's where things get a bit interesting for me here. Um, I've turned the flush draw and I've got two over cards against it. So it's just a case of now whether uh, whether I should be betting or looking to try and pick up sort of any fold equity or capitalise on my... Um, capitalize on what could be so I don't think I've got an equity advantage here but it's I've certainly got close to my fair share here so it's a situation where I think betting probably can't be that bad but uh, is it the optimal yeah, I move have, here? Uh, I know you and I have talked about this uh, pretty extensively actually off camera and uh, guys for those of you watching we're going to be putting hopefully some poker stoves or maybe we can talk about this hand a little bit in the thread accompanying this video Boomer and I have kind of agreed that it's sort of one of these classic spots where, you know, it's about even as far as, as equity and all that stuff is concerned. We don't think we have a lot of fold equity against the guy to our left is the problem, being such a lag bot. But I do kind of think that if we bet and he calls, the third guy behind might fold a better hand, like an ace-high kind of hand or king-high kind of hand. So I think that maybe betting might be a little better. Uh, Boomer, you mentioned that if we had ace, nine of diamonds, it's definitely a bet, which I completely agree with. Yeah. Because uh, at, that, at that point, it, we have value from so many more hands at that point with the ace high. Oh, yeah. We're, we're likely betting the best hand fairly often. I mean, yeah. not fairly, but some often. So, uh, yeah, I mean, we've. this is interesting that the fact that this is like our sixth recording of this hand means that we've just blazed right through it much more quickly than in the past. But uh, I do think it's very close. Uh, Jack-10 of diamonds, I would bet here, because now we've got the gut going along. Any kind of gut combo, obviously, I'd bet here. So, <clears throat> Jack-9 of diamonds or something like that, right? Ace-4, Ace-5 of diamonds. Yeah. Uh, all right, so I guess let's play through the hand and see how it goes. Yep. I do end up betting, and... Uh, Isn't Limit Hold'em a funny game where we would probably bet Jack-9, but not, but not Queen-9? Yeah. And when they both call the turn, I figure that the game's pretty much up there. And uh, it turns out that Jebby Vita did just have the <laughs> did just have the old Queen Five going on there. And uh, we're value betting against him. It's too bad he didn't raise and force out the best hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that guy was just uh, he might have been a bit afraid to raise his seven there, just because I don't know for what reason. I mean, I don't see why he doesn't think he's ahead of me on that flop, but. Uh, well, I mean, he's got second pair, and there's been some action. He probably doesn't want to face a potential three-better cap on the turn. He just wants to get to showdown. Yeah. That would be my guess. Yeah. I've got Jax here at uh, 23.30, and um, I think this is. I think this turns out to be pretty slow. I don't remember it. I played this session a week or two ago. I don't quite remember. That. Oh, it just yeah, folds right away. <laughs> righteously three-bet, and he folds, so pretty yeah. easy. I think uh, that's the kind of flop where I might even bet fold against this kind of opponent who hasn't seemed very strong or uh, very good at you know you know what I mean. He just played yeah. that last hand pretty passively. So. Yeah, I mean the thing Although is, it, I always talk myself into calling them. Yeah. Although then again, if he's not raising a seven, is he raising a you know is he raising a draw on that board? Some guys are so polarized, you're right, they'll just raise draws and always call yeah. pairs. It's kind of yeah. it's so frustrating, but once it's figured out, it's very nice. Yeah. It's especially against my, th especially against the three bet as well. It's, uh, just because you've taken that aggressive role, I feel like your range is very, very strong and ace-heavy there. 
I, we're just kind of trying to manufacture some discussion about that hand, because obviously yeah. we've got to fill a few seconds of time until the next yeah. hand. I'm sure nobody at home has caught on to what we're doing, though, obviously. Obviously, no. Is this guy Desi Pico? Is his picture like some kind of United Colors of Benetton? I, I feel like I've seen a picture somewhere. I have no idea. Um, we should get a poll going on. Yeah, we should. Answers on a postcard, anyone who knows that on the forums. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to need you to play a hand here pretty soon. Do you think you can make that happen for us? Uh, maybe. I think I, I can... I mean, usually my uh, my tendency in videos is to make at least one incredibly stupid fold at least once per video, isn't it? I mean, I managed it last time, so we're... Uh, Waiting for the uh, the huge spew. Uh, ever since the uh, epic <laughs> JP spew, I'm going to require that all my students make a just one epic spew per video. Yeah, it's like, ne ne never let it be said, BBB students don't know how to spew. <laughs> yeah, I mean, let's do some kind of free roll, like, whenever you make an epic spew in a video, I'll give you back half your, your investment or something like that. <laughs> That'd probably, actually, that might be a bad idea for <laughs> yeah. the internet. It might, be it might be a bad idea with Jay as well, because isn't he playing, like, hasn't he dabbled in 3060 at some point, so you might... That, mean, he doesn't need an excuse to view anyway, is the problem, so... <laughs> so I like go for okay. Oh, almost. <laughs> what do you think about A6 of diamonds there? Um, I just saw you muck that under the gun. Uh, at this kind of... It looks like a bunch of loose players to your left. Oh, but we don't know anything about them. They all seem to be newish to the table, right? Yeah. I don't see hands on them. No, I there's... personally would open, open most suited aces, including that one, under the gun at any table. You don't really mind if they all call. You don't really mind if they all fold. Uh, so my personal inclination would have been to open that. That being said, I don't hate a fold by any means, obviously. I'm, what are you opening? Ace-8 suited always? Ace-7. Ace-7, seven. 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 So yeah. Ace-6 is very close then, for sure. Yeah. Oh, here, here we go. Um, open limp from Kikadal here. And... Um, Step five. Um... I can tell you, yeah, you're waffling, you fold. I'm pretty sure you called uh, Jack 3 suited a little, few minutes ago. Yeah, I mean, usually, yes. you know, usually I like to argue with you, you know, like make a, you know, try and make something. But yes, I did call Jack 3 earlier, so that's just totally inconsistent, uh, really. From and you've got the extra dead money in this spot because the uh, of the open limp, the yeah. with their poster or something, or the open limper, yeah. So. Yeah. How are we doing? Uh, you you with me on the video here? About twenty seven, twenty five or so. Exactly. Picked in. We uh, make yeah. the nuts with the computer hand here. The queen and the seven. Yeah, I appear to have trips. So well. Uh, I like betting when I have trips. It's you know a good play. Yeah, I get huge amounts of respect as you can see on the getting two calls on the river there. See if Jeb I had a pair. Oh wow, he had three pair. How did, man? He's so unlucky. Yeah. How do you lose the pot with three pair? Yeah, the flush draw as well. I mean, it's just terrible. I mean, three pair and a flush draw, you can see why he thinks the internet is rigged. Yeah. Um, I'm just taking a... I don't a even think there's anything to say about that hand. It was no. pretty standard. Just taking a note on um, just J-Mot there, because he um, decided that raising would be a bad idea on the flop there, so he's... Uh, well, you want to wait for a safe turn card when you have top pair, and uh, this turn card, it wasn't safe because it gave you trips, yeah. so... Yeah. Well, I'm liking the yeah. I'm liking that he's showing his three stars. You know. Oh, he's got he's got the pride. Yeah. I'm not sure on stars, but I think it's uh, it might show him unless you turn him off. Uh, I don't remember how they've set it up. I think mine by default are off, but uh, yeah. Your avatar is enough to look at without having any more stars there, though. Yeah, fair enough. I'll uh, I'll give you that one. Uh, not a huge amount going on at the moment, really. Yeah, I know we've got a big burst of hands coming up in a few minutes. So. Yeah. Oh, our pal's left on the left table. Oh, yeah, Jeb Ived, or whatever his name is, is gone. That's too bad. Yeah. Not, I mean, a, a great seat anymore, actually. The two guys to our right are both taggy-seeming. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's not... I always try and pay attention to uh, things like this. And, um, because table... I mean, even lower limit tables can go sour quite quickly, so it's a, uh... Here's an ace-9 on the right here. Mm. Uh, standard open. Standard C-bet. 
Um, I like this turn bet. I like this turn bet for basically the standard reasons of value and protection. Yeah. You know, it's a dry board. We could easily be betting the best hand, and many worse hands will call. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, there's any any number of straight draws slash flush draws, you know, like two overcasts to the middle, whatever, that he might be peeling, you know, like Queen Jack with a single heart or something like that that he might peel, so... Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm firing twice there, and then with this Jack-10 on the left, I don't... Yeah, I mean, I don't see any reason not to bet every street when he just keeps calling. Yeah, just not quite up to there yet, but uh, I just don't... I just complete there in the... Uh, Oh, I'll pause it for a bit. Yeah. Where are you on your... Uh, Just about to hit the flop now, so that's 29.51. Yeah, 29.51. Alright, I'm with you. Yeah. And I have a flop middle pair here, and I think... Oh yeah, make sure you let me know which hands are coming up, so I don't get ahead of you. <laughs> yeah, no problem. It's Jack Jack down the left, and I've raised pocket I've kings on the right at the moment. Um, so with Jack 10, I think that... Uh, I think on and this you're leading out... Uh, Leading out probably any pair there and some draws as well. Yeah, try and keep try and keep the range uh, quite mixed and. Uh, I mean, once he calls down, I think just taking him to Value Town every street is perfect. Yeah, I mean the eight on the river is not a brilliant card, obviously, but it's only Jack Nine that it completes, or like you know eight seven for an unlikely two pair. Looks like you're getting some action over here with the kings on the right. Yeah, um, I decide to raise the turn there. Um, this time I'm just going to wind it back to the flop because. Sure. Uh, what did he did he donk into you on the turn? Uh, it looks like it. Oh, sorry. Tell me what uh, time in the video you end up getting to. Oh, yeah. Stand on a second. Sure. Those of you guys watching at home, uh, Boomer and I could not get Team Viewer to work, and so we are each. Uh, I guess because the inner tubes are clogged today. So we're each watching a copy of this on our respective computers, so we've got to make sure we sync up every now and then. So yeah. you'll hear us talking about times and so forth. That's what we're up to. Okay, so he's led out into me on the flop with uh, Pocket Kings on a pretty scary board there, and I do put a raise in. Yeah, absolutely agree. Yeah, And then for this confused me a bit here. On a complete brick of a turn, he's just led in straight into me again. Yeah, I see a lot of people do this play... Um, actually, at a lot of stakes, and uh, a lot of full ring guys use it, uh, both in what I see when I play full ring and what some people tell me. And pretty often, it's like a pair plus draw kind of thing. They don't yeah. want you taking a free card on the turn. Like, people always think flop raises are over cards or, like, free card plays these days, it seems like. Yeah. So, I, I would put him, I don't remember this hand, but I would put him on some kind of, like, pair plus draw, you know, like, jack, jack 10, uh... King nine, you know, King, King Jack, something like that. You know, maybe yeah. Ace nine or something like that. Weird. Yeah. Uh, I mean, just I mean, something it doesn't, we're ahead of range-wise yeah. strongly, and so I would always raise the turn here for yeah. sure. Yeah, it just doesn't make any sense for a big hand to be doing it, from my point of view. Because if he wanted to slow play the flop, why would he lead the turn? Surely he'd raise the turn if he was got if he had a you know if he had a hand like Queen Jack here. Yeah, I mean the double donk can sometimes be even a hand as strong as top pair, you know, maybe a queen yeah. ten or something here, but I don't see people taking like donk donk three bet with monsters. It's more like check call, check raise, or just check raise bet three bet or something. So Yeah. Well, moving moving on quickly. Uh I do put the raise in. And then this ten eight, real briefly on the left here, ten eight. I think I probably would prefer an ISO raise pre flop here. Yeah. Uh Oh, you did ISO. Okay, I thought you'd folded for a second. <laughs> um, on the right-hand table, I have been three bet on the turn here, noticing how short he is at this point. It's uh, it's a busy trying to just get it in with some kind of pair plus draw, as we were discussing at this point. And he did show up with. Uh, he did end uh, up showing up. Uh, yeah, I mean, I thought better lucky than good on the river, and. Uh, so they put the rest of his uh, rest of his money in, and yeah, I, mean, I don't put him on a, a flush ever when he double donks. <laughs> I mean, rarely when he double donks like that. So yeah, even if he weren't short stacked, I would probably put at least happy for three bets to go in on the river. So. Yeah, and on the uh, left hand table, I'm just considering this a standard ISO and just hoping to take it down. It's a decent flop for a pre flop, pre sorry, pre flop raiser to represent, you know, ace queen high. So oh, absolutely, yeah, the ace is great. 
it's hard for people to continue, even with hands beating us here, smaller bears and such. So yeah, oh, that's a uh, that's a no no from your school, isn't it? I used auto fold again, so uh, slap on wrist for that. What'd you have though? Nine seven off? Or yeah, nine seven off in the hijack with a poster. I mean, uh, I can't think of a scenario where you'd play it, even if it were limped to you. So it's okay. <laughs> it's not like you're in the blind and you, you know, auto folded some playable hand. Mm. Uh, jack ten on the right hand table now. Alrighty. Talk me th- well, we got almost a family pot going on here. Yep. Flop top. Erase, uh, erase that preflop if it's suited. Just uh. For- Sometimes yes, sometimes no. I think in this field I probably would do. Depends how well you're running at the table. <laughs> Depends how you know how I'm feeling, what the weather's like, etc. You know, but uh, yeah, I, uh, I like the lead out here certainly. Yeah. Uh, two pair, so fairly. Like turn. Yeah, turns very good. And then, okay, whatever. Let's see. It's spiked, and then it's the. Uh, wow, and all then hell breaks on the river here yeah and um pause this at, what are you at about 3203 or so and let's 32 figure out exactly river. let's figure out this river uh wow <laughs> i mean first thoughts the guy three betting is short stacked again but yeah not going to be an issue because he won't quite get all in yeah, okay the guy to our left it's been nothing but loose and passive in the couple of hands we've seen yep i can't really see him raising just one pair of aces here i mean i don't know you do you do sit but i think that um I, think I guess you see him raising a7 of diamonds or something on the river here, but yeah. a lot of the times I feel like he has one pair of beat. Yeah. If he has one pair of beat and he's raising the river ace, that means he has our two pair of beat, basically, because he's yeah. going to have aces up. So. Yeah, I mean, it's a pretty it's a pretty gross spot. I mean... I don't see sets, like, if he flopped a set, I don't see him slow playing through the turn. No, I don't so, think he's got a set. Uh, I don't think anyone's anyone has the chop because I think Jack 10 would raise the turn I think all two pair combos worse than ours would have raised the turn King Queen's well, a potential is, combo as well yeah I'm certainly heavily worried about King Queen or Ace Anything, two pairs Ace, yeah. up, Ace, Ace Jack Ace 10 Ace 6 uh, this is pretty silly I mean I know the first time we talked about it we were kind of like wow don't don't fold I kind yeah. of almost might fold now that we're looking at it the second time. I, I think that's what I'm. I think that's what I'm saying. I mean, that just that three bet on the river is just almost. You know, I mean, we're getting what six to one to call it. Looking at the pots thirteen, so six and a half to one, assuming that the guy behind us doesn't cap. That's yeah. The first time uh, we talked about it, I remember we were like, "Oh, big pot, you know, LOL, just call." Yeah. Now I kind of don't really see all that many things we beat. <laughs> There's also a small risk the guy to our left caps, and then do we cry call the one more bet at the end, you know? I yeah, knowing that we're always beat. So I, I just want change my mind to fold here, actually. Yeah, I mean, people just don't three... I mean, I just don't see it at point five. They just don't three bet the river unless they've got the, you know, the nuts all very, very close to it. And, I mean, I think we can agree, obviously, capping this river would be wildly bad. Yeah. Um, and I... Between call two or fold, when's the last time you called two on the river and we're good here? Uh, I mean, in, in a 45 big bet pot about three weeks ago. Okay, well, what about in a 13 big bet pot against two lose passes? Uh, never. <laughs> but then again, been, how often do you, you bet you, call the river when the flush when the flush card hits and it's always the flush against the loose passive? You know? Yeah, I mean, when when you've been leading, it wasn't like people were jamming all streets here. You know, we've been leading the action on every street. And it still goes raised three bet by two loose passives on this river. Yeah. You know, I think I'm talking myself more and more into this being a fairly good fold. You know, yeah, a good spot to fold. Yeah. Uh, that, that being, I'm what are you called, right? Uh, uh, just wind it on just for everyone at home to see me agonizing over what I'm going to do. It's one of these situations where I've made yeah. this call many a time. I yeah. Maybe- for the sake of the and Kipperdell calls, and he and we've got two oh. pair, and the three bet was ace queen. Ace queen, oh my gosh, that hurts my soul. Yeah. We I could was... have capped to force out the ace jack. What do you think? Uh, probably not. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I was just, I was just there actually at that point, just going, if I fold here and I get shown ace queen and ace king, I can't submit this video ever. <laughs> so. That's great. Did we would we would talk about how you made the right play. <laughs> It's like, I can't make another hideous fold. It's just <laughs> that was a goofy spot. Uh, a very goofy spot. I think folding is fine. Uh, and again, it's it's all about the thought process. If you tell me, 
these guys are both short stacked and bad and the pot is big and I have two pair I'm calling I would have been like boomer I got you back you know well, that was the, I wasn't too I mean again I was looking at the guy who had a short stack and going like mess short stack you know that's one of the you hear but I think with Kipperdell's raising them being three bet I mean I was absolutely certain they both had an ace in the hand. It was just whether they had a. Uh, it was just whether they both had the. Uh, whether one of them had two pair or not. So. Yeah, uh, just the combos are not working in our favor there. Yeah. Uh, let's start the playback again because I know we've got another hand coming up. Yeah. Uh, tell me where you're at as far as timing. I'm up to 33.20. I've just been winding it forward. Nothing much has happened. Oh, okay. Let me catch up. Then. Just keep narrating where you're at, and I'll yeah. catch up. Yeah, I've got nine. T I've got nine ten off suit in the cut off and raise on the right hand table. I'm with you. I'm with you. Uh, small blind calls because he likes to do that. He's got pocket aces. Why wouldn't he call? I mean, <laughs> um, three bet by the big blind. This guy race star is out of control. He's just on yeah. tilt, trying to lose his money. Yeah. Flop a straight draw. What do you think I'd, about raising here? Um, we didn't talk about it the first time. Pause it for a sec, will you? Yeah, I'm on the turn currently. But. He's stacking off. We have a pretty good chance to knock out stiff aces, except for his yeah. pocket aces. I mean, he's not folding pocket aces. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and I, you know we're getting it in with at least a third equity. Yeah. I don't know. Is that really dumb? Maybe we just want the guy to stay in since we don't have the, enough equity. That was what I was thinking at the time. What I was thinking at the time was if I had, the, if I had like, the other ten. side, if I had King Ten, then yes, I'd raise because yeah, I've got a chance of winning a showdown. You know, or Ace King, I'd raise too. Yeah, obviously. We've no pair out here, though. I think you're right. Uh, yeah, I'm just looking to hit my draw here. I'm probably going to get there cheap because Stiff Aces isn't going to. Uh, I don't think he's one who's going to do a huge amount of stupid. Although he does, he does look fairly aggressive from what I've seen of him. But that's mostly been through Don King, from what I can remember. All right, let's play it. Let's queue it up again. Where are you at here? Thirty-three, fifty or so. Yep, exactly. Yeah. A call. Aces take down, obviously. Oh wow, aces and sixes. Okay. Yeah. I like the cold call of ace king pre-flop because, as we all know, it's a drawing hand. Yeah. So. And then the flop, he hit a draw. So there it is. It played out yeah. perfectly for him. Yeah, I think raising that flop might be a little over and a little over creative with just the unders. Maybe yeah. if we had at least one over, or two overs. I'd raise, yeah, like you said, ace king there for sure, king ten. Yeah, it's like since I am going to have to win at showdown in that hand, uh, you know, come what may, I'm going to have to win at showdown. So it's uh, the see. fact that stiff ace is cold called pre-flop. Uh, either he has two big cards and he's kind of bad, in which case he's not folding to our flop raise, or he has two low cards or a low pair and he's probably folding even for the one bet. So a raise might not actually accomplish all that much range-wise against him. Yeah. Um, I saw an ace ten on the left hand table, it's fairly standard. Sure, and looks like flop the nuts basically. Uh yep. Uh just checking around on the action here. Lara's taking forever over deciding what to do. <laughs> oh look. And been dunked out into here and uh Despico's raised. Um just call him Benetton. Something about that. It doesn't even look like Benetton. It looks like a ghost, like a man and a ghost or something, and like a disembodied hand with two red Livestrong bracelets uh, on it. Okay, fair enough. So Benetton's right. raised here. I mean, obviously, righteously taking him to three town is far and away my preferred play. Yeah. So. And Lara just calls. I mean, what is that going to be? A middle pair or a flush draw? Middle pair, and flush draw, usually, I think. Uh, something something along those lines. What are you uh, typing in the chat for, by the way? Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we're just a little bit out of sync here. Um, yeah, I'm, on 35, I'm on 3520. Oh, okay, get to the part where you type in the four. Yeah, I did way. that four, by the way. And, just got, and now the six just makes things even worse. I, mean, I gotta ask if it's four, by the way. Go ahead and fold the turn, am I right? Yeah, I mean... Joking with you, I would yeah, never yeah, fold yeah. here, but... It, you're right, it's a four so often. Yeah, pay it off and there you go, it's a four. <laughs> what if Despico calls the river? Do you overcall or what do you do then? That's pretty gross, actually. I feel, I feel pretty sick, really, when he, when he calls the river. Because it's like, we have to have him beat, right? But, yeah, that's, you know. what, that's what I was thinking. I mean, his hand looks like sort of king ten, queen ten, that sort of thing. Yeah, so. And, uh, you know, I think... Have we that uh, queen jack of spades on the left yet? Yeah. Yep, we're uh, here. We'll scroll back to that for a sec, and I just wanted to ask you, what, uh, 
What sort of things do you look for when you 3-bet that versus not 3-betting it and so on? Uh, basically, it's a factor of where, I mean, where I am on the table, who's raising and from where for the most part of it. Um, basically, this guy's under the gun and shown that he's not, you know, he's certainly not a lunatic by any stretch of the imagination. He has open limped a couple of times. So, I'm figuring his range for raising from there is pretty tight. Yeah. Um, which he hasn't I'm shown himself to get out of line, and like you said, he's more likely to be not quite out of line enough. So yeah. this is probably a real hand more often than, than we want it to be when yeah. we're three betting here. I mean, it's fine sometimes when you are, you know, just isolating with position a lot of the times, just fine. Um, so even if it's like a cutoff button dynamic, you're certainly yeah. three betting. Yeah. yeah, certainly. And I think if he opened in the hijack and I was on the button, I'd probably three bet it as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, but at this point, there's just too many. There's too many behind who might take three to the face, and if that happens, I'm going to end up. I could end up sort of sandwiched in between what looks like a very strong range and sort of two cards, and I've got queen high, which means I'm really looking. You know, I'm looking to hit the flop very hard, and I built this really big pot pre-flop. I tend to I tend to agree with your with your thought process a lot, actually. That uh, any other configuration at the table, and I'm probably pulling the trigger, but Versus this under-the-gun guy, I think folding is the most prudent play. Uh, I'm assuming king-queen suited, you're still three-betting, yeah? Yeah, king-queen suited, I still three-bet there. What about king-jack suited? Uh, that one's right on the borderline, king-jack. Might be a tight fold, same as queen-jack, probably. Yeah. What about ace-ten suited? I think ace-ten are still three-bet, because there are worse suited aces in most people's ranges under the gun as well. So, that were, yeah. yeah. Ace-nine suited, I'd muck. Yeah. Yeah, okay. We this is I mean a common spot, so it's always fun to tease out the ranges a little bit. Yeah. Uh go ahead and keep playing and tell me where where you go to catch. Up. I'm at 3616 with Queen Jack off suit. Jump right up there. Queen Jack off on the right. Okay, talk me talk me through this. I got it up here. Uh stiff aces is open limped in the hijack. Um CS borders just completed, so I'm fairly sure his range is very weak at this point. So um I pop the Queen Jack from the big blind, which I think is uh, I think that's fairly standard there really. It's just uh gives me the chance against what look like weak ranges, to, you know, a weak player and a weak range to build uh to maybe get some fold equity or represent the best hand. Oh, I agree. It's a, it's one of those factors that I love talking about in six max limit hold'em. It's you've got the combination of value and, and creating fold equity. Yeah. Uh, I think it was Oink maybe who talked about the term implied fold equity. I'm not sure if I'm misapplying it here. <laughs> yeah. But basically you know, and, and you're working against two guys. The one guy, it's basically for value against, the, for the open limper, right? Yeah. And the second guy, it's for fold equity against, because he looks relatively tightish, and we can somewhat assume if he had a big hand, he'd be popping it. Yeah. So it's basically, we've got a couple things working together at once, and it's also good for our image and whatnot. So I yeah. love the raise here. Yeah. I'd raise a lot of, I mean, not a lot of hands, but I'm raising a jack-10 suited here, pocket sevens, probably even a 10-9 suited. You yeah. Know? Yeah, the uh, flop bet's fairly standard ace, king, queen. Um, on the turn, deuce of clubs. Not a great turn. I mean, not a bad turn card, but not a great one, actually. No. Well, I think it's I think it's one against this guy I can pretty safely bet fold. I tend um, to agree. I mean, he's still calling with any club now, and he's still calling with, like, 10x or jack x, no, yeah. no pair. Yeah. Uh, um, so I do, once he checks me, I do lead out, and he just uh, he just throws it away. Yeah. Um, kind of half me to put. If he don't fold, it's really tough that one. Um, Might fold to a donk there yeah. uh, in a vacuum. I think I think so. It's a looks like a bit of a tight fold, but it's uh, it's pr more often than not. I think we're just crushed by his range when he does that. Or we get into goofy spots where we, we like river two pair, but the four flush comes. Yeah. Or river the straight and the four flush. You know, there are like several goofy spots that we can kind of avoid by just folding on the turn. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Right, we're at so where are we at here in your vid? 37.10. I've got jack eight on the button. All right. He talked to me. Um, standard C bet on the flop. Um, we come to the turn. And he's peeled us on a very dry board here, the uh, 10, 10 6 3 rainbow. It's real, you know, there's there's a few gut shots there, but there's no flush draws. 
And um, yeah, the turn... I mean, I'm waiting in more toward pairs probably than draws. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Or maybe two overs. Uh, yeah. So this guy did just cold call ace king a few hands back. So I mean, we can put him on king queen some of the time here, ace yeah. nine or something. Right? But uh, yeah, I think the uh, the turn is. I mean, we've talked about this hand as well, whether uh, leading or value checking here for the uh, or taking the free cards. But it's not it's not a value check. It's a free card play. But um, check, hitting check yeah. that button. Yeah, just hitting just hitting the check buttons better than betting here. Um, yeah, let's let's stop putting fancy concepts on everything. Yeah. Let's just either call it the check button or the bet button. <laughs> yeah, check now button. On. That's my new coaching style. Fair enough. Uh, uh, I think I want to get some discussion going about this in the thread accompanying this video because this is a pretty classic spot where, I mean, very classic, right? Do we want to check behind with outs? Do we have any fold equity in our bet? Mm. I would. Ar Sorry to interrupt you for a sec there, by the way. I would argue that. When an unknown kind of loose bad player peels this flop, their range is pretty strong toward either pairs or ace high, neither of which are going anywhere on this turn. Mm. So I don't think we have a lot of fold equity. We might even have more fold equity against a tag here than against a loose passive. Yeah. Also, what I also what else came to mind when when I was looking back at it was that if he did peel with some kind of weird gut shot, you know, two cards between a six and a ten. He's oh, hit yeah, it in some form of he's hit in some form or another. He's either paired up or he's got the straight now. Yeah, if the if the turn's an ace, I'm betting for sure, or yeah. even a king, uh, because then at that point we've no showdown value and we've got no no draws or really. Yeah, it's just a. Uh, I think it can be uh, sometimes, especially if you end up autopilot kind of. Oh look, I've got a straight draw. I can bet this, you know. And it's like, well, maybe better taking a free card here. Yeah, I mean, I think even King Queen I'd, or King Jack, I'd probably bet here, because yeah. now we've got the overs as well as the gut. You know, it's almost more of a value combo. Yeah. Somewhat value, some old equity. Uh, but here, this only. Which is weird because this can't be that much of a different hand than King Queen King Jack. But yeah. I'm much more comfortable betting those in this yeah. spot. I might even check those behind. I mean, to be honest, isn't it the same scenario where we've got no fold equity and? We're still behind most of his range. I mean, the thing is, what are we if we do bet here as a bluff, what are we aiming at? You know, it's sort of random queen highs and king highs that have just peeled the flop for because, essentially. Well, no, you know, I'm saying, uh, say, say instead of jack eight here on the same turn card, we've got king queen, king jack. Mm. Shouldn't we be checking those behind too? Um, we put his range as as pairs plus or ace high. I think so on this sort of, on this sort of board because they've not got any uh, they've not got any equity and we've got significant they've not got you know we've not got any fold equity and we've got significant outs. Yeah, the only thing folding is a hand worse than ours. Uh, yeah. I think there was a hand like this in the JBC video where we had like queen ten high and and uh, we ended up talking ourselves into realizing that you know it's basically just when someone peels a certain kind of flop texture, there's we've no fold equity on the turn really. So. Yeah. That's interesting. So then what hands are we betting on the turn here? Just ace, I mean, good ace highs and pairs, maybe? It, le it does leave us a bit polarized, doesn't it? It's um, it's oh, pretty much... Bluffs. Yeah. Balance, we're betting the bluffs, too. Yeah. But, I mean, how many to how many absolute total bluffs are there on that board? Yeah, that we're raising pre Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I mean, I could bet fold some kind of... I'm bet, but bet folding small pocket pairs on the turn here. For sure, yeah, you know, probably bet folding anything eights and down as far as pocket pairs. Yeah, I mean, should we be bet folding like ace ten versus such a loose passive? I don't know. I could never talk <laughs> I, myself. I don't know fold. if I could bring myself to do. And the thing is, this guy doesn't look that passive post flop. I mean, I mean, I know it's only forty hands that we've got on him, but you know, with a fifty VPIP and having an aggression factor close to two, you know, that's a pretty that's pretty aggressive post flop. Yeah. This is an interesting spot. Uh it's one of those I we were just kinda talking about the classic sort of check behind or bet thing and now we've sort of realized that maybe we should be checking behind a lot more here than we first thought. Mm. So uh I agree with you though. The nine, I mean, a lot of his just random gut peels have now paired up or hit a gut. So yeah. All right. So go ahead and play it back and tell me where to go so I can catch up to you. Thirty-seven sixteen. I am at the moment. Just starting the playback again. All right. Hit it. Okay. Obviously, it's results oriented because we get check raised on the turn. Yeah. And obviously, we brick off on the river, so nothing to do but fold there. This guy has pocket aces every hand. I mean, that's got to be against the rules. Yeah, I mean... 
Have you seen the ones that are on fire that everyone always had on Pokestars yes, for ages? I, I did not know where those came from, and then I just saw the other day some kind of, like, Power Thirst energy drink commercial, and <laughs> that they were in that vid. Or maybe it was Deuces Crack, Power Thirst spoof. Yeah. I'm not sure if that's where they're from originally, but I saw them in that vid, so... Yeah. I just gave a bunch of free advertising to our sponsors. I'm expecting a case of Power Thirst in the mail any day here. So, yeah. Wow, do you think we could do product placement in these vids? Because that would be pretty cool. That would be pretty good. I mean, could get a free... Like, sorry, I'm late. sorry I'm late to the boom to the video, Boomer. I just had to drive in in my new M3 Roadster. You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, on, let me open up my Deuce Crack Energy drink. All right, <laughs> let's get back to the action here. Yeah, Jack 5, lots of flush draw. Yeah, I see it. Wow, I uh, I bet there's a lot of potential for uh, you could have like a Coca-Cola table mod instead of a Deuces yeah. Crack table mod. Oh, that'd be that'd be interesting, and uh, you like just double rake backers. Yeah, um, coming back to yeah, the I action. Mean, 30, 30, so far, uh, yeah, so far on the flop. I, I mean, I agree with how you played it so far. Yeah, I I would lead out here, and I mean, there's nothing else you can. Do. Wow, gross spot on the turn. Where are you at here? Did I get ahead of you? Or? I'm on 38.46 here, so Batten, and now he raises. Yeah, pause it when the guy pops. This is pretty gross, actually. Yeah. I mean... Uh, wow. <laughs> i got to think one of them's got trips, wouldn't you, really, here? I fold this spot with some regularity. Uh, I'm exposing my nititude here, right? But, uh, <laughs> my nittery. I fold the spot with some regularity, and what do you think about that? I don't think it can be... I mean, we're only getting 4 to 1, for one thing, uh, looking looking at the odds. I mean, 4 point, you know, 4.3 something to 1, if you want to be a little bit pedantic. But it's... Um, so we're only just getting the odds to draw to our flush, assuming it's completely live anyway. And... I mean, I, I tend to put somebody on 10x fairly often here, meaning yeah. that... Meaning we're that we've got seven, not nine. Yeah, we're gonna get there and lose on the river some of the time when they pair up if they haven't already boated up. Yeah, uh, sure. I wouldn't fold ace X of hearts here, but I think I fold bad, and I wouldn't probably fold two overs heart. You know, king queen of hearts because yeah. rarely will somehow hit a pair and be good. But I fold these unders hearts with some regularity in this kind of spot. Uh, now everyone's going to start raising me on the turn whenever the board pair is bringing in a flush draw. Yeah, that, that's, I mean, that's you doomed in the home any home game coming on now. Yeah, guys, I mean, <laughs> what, what am I calling with anyway here? <laughs> Somebody always says 10, so whatever. Yeah. Uh, what do you think? What, what happened in the sand? I don't recall. Um, just playing forward, I don't actually I think I did call too cold, which... Uh, and, again, the river double pairs the board, so... <laughs> No or can do on before every hand. Oh, it's the different guy. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure Desi Pico has a ten right now. He's boated. The only question is, had he boated before? No, he hadn't. No, ace ten. And uh, what is looking at mid pocket pair? If we had to guess, uh, had a six. A six. Big nine, lick. Nine six. <laughs> um. Maybe we some folks can talk about that. Uh, I am a nit at heart. Uh, in spite of all my proclamations to the contrary in my deuces cracked threads when I say raise or whatever. I kind of want to fold that. I think folding is maybe... I'm strongly... I'm going to say strongly that folding is better there than calling, uh, just to incite a little discussion. Uh, I know implied odds and yada yada, but really, like, we spike a flush. How many bets are we going on the river? Two? I mean... It's like ace of hearts we, on the river there. How good do we feel? Yeah. Yeah, or I mean, some kind of middley, like a nine or something that gives, t or a jack, you know, that gives a lot of probable t trip tens combos. A, uh, you know, hit hitting their kicker. Um, and how would the action go on the river? Are we in position or out of position? We're first to act, right? Yeah, first to act. So are we leading out the flush there, or are we check raising? And if we're check raising any three bets, I mean, we're calling and hating life, but we're never good. So. Yeah. Uh, maybe I'm overthinking it, but uh, let's let's have some folks talk about that hand. I love how I say let's have some folks like you and I have like a whole crew of people we can just like rush onto the scene, you know? Yeah. You know, like Monty Python, the reenactors, <laughs> they just rushed in bust loads of people. Yeah, that was uh, a, one of my favorite films, personally. That's a solid film. I yeah. uh, I think we can just spam this to everybody on our Skype contact lists. Spam yeah. the, the link to the thread. So that's when we say we'll get a crew in there, that's what we mean we'll be doing. 
So that's apologies in advance to everyone who knows us on Skype. <laughs> everyone who knows me on Skype, when you got the link to this, you know, you better do it or else I'm going to get angry. Um, all right, so where are we? This King 8 hand? Yeah, 3920. All right, I'm going to hit play and let's see what happens here. We haven't really seen much out of this guy to our left yet, except he seems a bit loose, but no real sample size. No. Yeah. Oh, and our buddy Just Jim, okay, is left as well. Yeah. And uh, Caracula thinks for absolutely ages and donks out into us. The Donk of Death. Yeah, it's, it should just rename this video Donkalicious or something, because everyone's donk just dead. donking into me this video. I mean, this is pretty goofy. I would have given serious thought to folding the flop. I mean, I'm paused on the Against flop at the moment. Out. Oh, you're on the flop? Yeah, just at the moment. I it's keep messing up the action by <laughs> getting ahead of myself. Sorry to those of you at home. Yeah. You're on the flop. And he's donked into me. Okay, so, I mean, we're getting, what, almost 7 to 1. Yep. Total unknown, this passive guy. Okay, 7 to 1, right? Our kings, we're happy if kings come, we're happy if 8s come, we're happy if 9s come. Yep. I guess it is a deal, isn't it, with no back doors? Yeah. I just sort of assume that this is a 10 a lot of the time. Or a set, but even if it's a 7, some of the time we've got a lot of outs is the problem. So yeah. I think you're right about... I mean, my internet. I'm still in that Jack-5 suited hand mode <laughs> that I'm just holding. Yeah. I mean, I'm basically, when he donks out into me, I put his range on something like any pair, but most likely not a 10. I mean, sometimes they, sometimes players will donk out. I just think that most, especially this guy, he's, uh, he looks like he does have the ability to raise, because um, he's shown it pre-flop so far, and he looks like he's fairly aggressive post-flop. And I just think that he's, uh, I think that he probably would go ahead and check raise a 10. So I think a lot of the time we're looking at two, you know, two pair, you know, pair outs we're happy with, um, backdoor straight draw we're quite happy with, and uh, sometimes, sometimes we will have the best hand as well because he'll dunk yeah. out like random gut shots and things like that. Although that's going to be quite hard to, uh, going to be quite hard to deal with. Although if he does, uh, he dunks and then just checks the turn, we can be fairly confident that we do have the, uh, that we do, you know, that we may indeed have the best hand here. I'm going to defer to you on this one just because I'm not really familiar with these stakes. Uh, when someone cold calls the small and then bets here, I always... I mean, I see a lot of it as like Jack Town or something for some reason. Uh, mm. I think you... you I mean, just odds-wise, I was a little too pessimistic in my first yeah. first glance at it. I mean, we're getting a pretty good price even just for the overs and the backdoor straight cards yeah. that are going to come up there. And obviously, if an 8 comes, we're not folding either. Yeah. So... Okay, I, we, we've, we've got a standard appeal here then, yeah. don't we? Okay. Yeah, so moving on to the turn. Are you full? I mean, King 6, you folding? I think king so, six? yes. I think King 6, because I just lose to that many more hands with King 6. Yeah, and that's the closeness of it. Now a 6 comes, yeah. we're like, eh. Now yeah. an 8 or 9 comes, and we're like, eh, crappy gut shot, you know, so. Yeah. But, I mean, again, against a, you know, against a random 7, we could have as many as 10 outs. It's a bit of a... You know, it's a bit of a nasty situation, this, because that does complete a lot of the draws. I think I'd probably lean more towards folding now um, from this from this side. But the thing is, if we pick up a gut shot on the turn after peeling the flop, you know, should we yeah, be peeling the flop? That's the, uh, yeah, that's one of those classic, like, one close bad decision leads to two or three more in the same hand. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and say that... Uh, I've got bad eyesight, and I saw this as king six. That's why I said immediate fold the first time. I'm going <laughs> to yeah. try and protect protect my reputation here a little bit. Yeah. I think, yeah, king six, definitely fold. King eight, definitely call. Mm. Uh, all right, let's get on with this hand here. What yeah. do you say? Yeah, well, we're on the turn now, aren't we? So it's, oh, we are. Okay. Uh, yeah. So and we it, do peel. Okay, I'm with you now. Yeah, and we've hit a six, so we now do have the gut shot as well. Okay, um, so again, we're getting a little worse than five to one. Yeah, uh, we're still happy if a king comes. We're probably still calling on an eight river, aren't we? Because we yeah. finally had a pair. Yeah, we've got and a, a pair. nine. A nine. So nine. kings, nines, kings and nines are six outs. Eights. I mean, maybe give us one more out. I'm going to discount pretty heavily for the eights. Yeah. Uh, six or seven ish outs, getting five to one. In position again, it's pretty close. Yeah. Uh, I do think he pays off always. We are raising a king, aren't we? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. We are raising a straight. Yeah. I think the fact. 
we get multiple bets, each of those scenarios probably means it's okay to call here. Okay. Uh, that six is not a great card just for him donking out some gut shots and so forth. He may have paired up now. Yeah. But I mean, again, the only we have a lot of possibilities, so. Yeah, the only draws that are really beat now are sort of Jack Nine and Jack, you know, hands that were draws on the turn. Yeah. Sorry, on the floor, so Jack Nine, Jack Eight, sort of, you know, the uh, the eight sixes and the nine eights have got there now, so it's. Uh, I mean, five to one. We're raising kings and, and nines, and we're yeah. calling eights. I think it's got to be an okay peel again. Yeah. Okay, so 39.50, and I'm winding on here. Yeah. All right, all right. Yeah. So I do make the, after pondering quite a lot, <laughs> for quite a long time. I mean, if somehow this pot were only $3, or $4 instead of 6 then I would fold. Yeah. Or $4 instead of 5 I'd fold, or $3 instead of 5 and he checks. And now now. We, what on earth? Okay. We have a winner, sir. Yeah, he just uh, he just gave up on the river there. He was just doing low bluffage. Yep. I mean, oh, there's always clapped by that. I guess there is the always random donk factor. We weren't even taking into account. <laughs> or... Yeah, there's always there's always the fact he could potentially check behind a worse hand, but that didn't fit. That didnn't figure too much into my. Um, how much are you it. hating life if he checks behind ace high? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's rewind a bit, because I missed something on the right. I think uh, you had some pocket deuces. I mean, uh, he had the Dolly Parton. How can he fold? He had, he had the 9 to 5. Uh, uh, I'm back at about 40.05 on the right table. Okay. And I saw you had a pocket pair that somehow got folded pre-flop. I want to make sure there wasn't a misclick of any kind. Uh, probably, knowing me. Uh... Limp and a pop. Uh, I'm calling this with regularity. Thoughts? Um, to be honest, you're probably right in this situation. I mean, I'm not a huge fan of pocket deuces, but I don't think there's. Uh, I think getting what's effectively five to one there I should be. Uh, I should be calling there with some regularity. Wow, it's. I don't know if I. I mean, I'm even defending deuces if it's heads up here. Mm. Uh, so maybe that's the difference in stakes. I don't know. We don't have any sample on this guy. Yeah. Uh, you know, if he steals 20% and he's a nit over a big sample, I don't hate folding deuces pre, but against an unknown button ISO with a really bad limper already in there, yeah. you know, I mean, we're going we're gonna to win some nice pots on some flops. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's, also, it's also one of those things taking, I mean... We're talking five to one here, but um, if we're going heads up, it's like how much of a factor does the rate become with a hand like pocket deuces as well? That's where yeah, we're that's at. true. I mean, it's a little bit of a factor, but uh, I wow, well, I tend not to think about it, things in that respect as much as like I know entity is really into those kind of calculations. For me, it's more of like a not an image thing, but you know, this is in my defending range, and I feel like I'm going to make make up for it with my image and in later hands by defending and yeah. playing these kind of hands aggressively on a lot of flop textures, you know. Also, uh, another, another, that another thing that may have cut, I mean, I don't know if this did come into it, but how much does the fact that one guy's really short cut into it? Yeah, if if uh, the preflop razor were short, then I would probably consider fold more strongly because he's more likely to have the strong hand and we have less implied odds against him because he's short. Uh, if, for example, Bonnie Clyde limped the cutoff and Ray Star raised the button. Uh, but here, the guy raising is, is plenty deep. Yeah. So in case we flop set versus his overpair, we're good to go. Okay. Uh, I mean, you make a good point. It's definitely something to keep in mind. Stack sizes and limit hold them. I know it seems like an oxymoron. But there are definitely scenarios where your implied odds get cut way down, like you said. So uh, I think you may have also just been busy typing a note on the left table. That might have led toward your fold here. <laughs> yeah, that might have been that, but I, I usually don't um, fold just because I'm writing a note. <laughs> I mean, pa what are you? What are you? No brainer calling here. Sixes are a no brainer call, right? I think I probably three about sixes. Um, yeah. or I think I call fives and fours. Threes. I mean, usually I would call threes and twos. I don't know what got into me there, to tell you the truth. But uh, funny, like I I often will fold threes and twos pre flop you know, from, like, the button or the cutoff in certain yeah. situations. I, I agree with Death Donkey in those spots that it's not worth it a lot of the time. Uh, 
Here we've, we're getting a better price, obviously, but it's canceled out by being in a worse position. So it's got to be kind of similar to having it folded to you in the cutoff for the button, all things considered. Or yeah. at least that's how I kind of think about these scenarios. Mm. Uh, I don't know. I think I would call this, maybe we're making too much into it, uh, guys in the thread. Is this a no-brainer call for you guys? What do you think? Uh, let's go ahead and move on. What do you say, Boomba? Yep. I'm at 4033. Um, oh, 4033. Let me catch up then. Yeah. All right. I'm not with you. Just kidding. I'm with you. Where are we at? Uh, just three bet nines pre-flop against a high jack open. Okay. Fairly standard. Flops ace jack five of spades. Um, standard C bet. Calls turns pretty much blank. I just fire one more shell because I think he's uh, again he's maybe one of the type who would have probably raised on that board if he'd have uh, if he'd have hit a um, if he'd have hit a pair of some description I think I'd have been facing down check raise or if he had a strong draw I think it'd be the same and you've seen how aggressive he's been with top pair so far so uh, yeah I like I like the turn bet because just the nature of the board is so dry I mean he can have all kinds of of, of over cards that haven't hit yet as well as straight draws, and he might even get stuck in there with a smaller pair than ours. You know, it rarely eights their sixes or something. Yeah. Uh, thinking the turn card, by his logic, the turn card is not very scary. And I've certainly peeled there with eights and sixes in his spot plenty of times on the turn. So mm. uh, I can easily have king, queen. Or yeah, exactly. I think the turn bet is fine. Uh, Ace eight on the right table, are you in that one yet? Yep, 40-52. Um... I think this is the last scene in the video, or we're getting there. Yeah, we're getting there. Um, opens from the cutoff, and I show my complete and utter, you know, irrationality that I've been playing with on this table. Yeah. Fold twos, fold jack five suited when I've got a huge, when I've got implied odds, and now I'm just taking ace eight suited and uh, ace yeah, eight off. off off suit and giving it plenty with it. So. Sir, it's double suited. It's double suited. Yeah, you can make twice as many flushes. Yeah. Uh, I mean. I don't think this is like a bad three bet by any means. Uh, it's towards like the bottom to, of my range. Yeah, same here. I would like to know this guy is frisky or likes just, just to open the cutoff a lot before I would no-brainer three bet it. But I yeah. certainly don't think it's like a, a huge deal. You know? Yeah. Uh, uh, stiff aces. You're probably taking out your uh, anger on folding the deuces. <laughs> yeah. Stiff aces takes three. Standard. And uh, the flop's 710 jack with two diamonds on it. So we're at 41. All right. Uh, pretty, you know, not the best flop in the world. I do have a gut shot and a, you know, run a run a straight flush, but that's pretty much what we're. Uh, well, I mean, we've we've got some stuff working. I mean, we're betting our whole range here anyway. But somebody with a small pocket pair will get out of the way pretty easily here, which is not bad for us. So, yeah. so I lead, and it's called, and I'm raised behind. Okay. Um, by. I'm not even going to pronounce that. Is it Bon? I'll do it. It's it's Bonnie Clyde. Okay. Uh, it's it's Tupac actually, but it's Bonnie Clyde. It's kind of a contradiction. Yeah. Um, um, but I guess they all were kind of anti-authority yeah. figures. Yeah. Getting twelve and a half to one here. Um, got shot. Let's, let's, let's work on ranges a little bit for Bonnie Clyde here. Yeah. Uh, I don't put him on a big pocket pair because he should have capped that pre-flop. Mm. Uh, so I'm putting him either on on flush draws on straight draws, or on, like, you know, ace-10, you know, ace-jack, you know, king, you know, like, big pair, basically. Yeah. Kicker. Uh, and I think he'd also raise diamonds, and I think he'd also raise king-queen, probably, here. Yeah, I mean, he's on the, he's on the button as well, so if he is, if he is a fan of the, uh, if he is a fan of the free card play, this would be a perfect time to use it as well. Yeah, I mean, I don't really put him on pocket eights or pocket nines. No. Uh, We've got one of the eights, and also it doesn't seem like the kind... Maybe he'd make some kind of weird free card, value free card race here, but I don't really buy it, so... Yeah. I'm putting it more on two big cards, either with or without a pair. Yeah. And maybe some kind of ace-i flush draw. Okay. So oh, I yeah, do I like peel. that. You've got a peel for sure, so... Yeah. Turn gives us a straight. Uh, check, I check raise the uh, turn. This is interesting. Uh, what do you think about leading the turn? Um, see, the range I, I'm just working on the range. I mean, what I we've discussed what range, um, what range we 
put him on and I actually thought that his range was pretty much set two pairs top pair sort of big flush draw as well and yeah, I mean do you I think, think he's 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 betting all those made hands yeah and he's checking behind like only two overs in a flush draw but two overs in a flush draw now at least have an open ender and may have hit yeah. you know like if yeah. he had king queen or if he had like ace queen of diamonds or he's ace king I mean he probably wouldn't bet ace king of diamonds on this turn Mm. I mean, but he has a lot of outs either way. Yeah. He might fire again with that even, too. Yeah. No, no, you're right. I think he is betting most of his range here. Yeah. Uh, and we can potentially trap stiff aces in to cold call, too, with some kind of draw when we check race. Yeah. Um, also, one thing I was thinking, I mean, it comes we back now to... Uh, yeah. Okay, go on. I mean, he has now come back and three bet me. Um, so... Uh, the turn? Yeah. Play. Sec. Check race... And Stiff Aces clears out, so this is, like, the worst possible scenario for us here. Mm. Um, and you cap. Well, what... I mean, obviously, we've got the spew factor in mind here, but the other thing that I was thinking of at the time was how big how big of a range... I mean, how much of my range should really consist of an 8 here, considering well, I mean, I've read about the small blind... Where are you here? About forty-one twenty in the video. Forty-one twenty-four, yeah. I mean, that's a, a factor. Also, a factor is how much of his range is three betting this turn. You know. I mean, I was thinking I mean, pretty much sets and two pairs. I don't think aces, king, aces, or, aces or kings shouldn't be three betting this turn. I don't think any one pair hand would three bet this turn except maybe queens, mm. which shouldn't, but it might. I see people do it all the time. Yeah, because uh, they've got a straight draw. Or ace queen of diamonds because you know hee haw, right? Um, yeah. Ace King of Diamonds three betting would be bad. Um, I don't see a lot of eights in his range either because we have the eight diamond blocker, so it's not like he can have Ace Eight of Diamonds or something. Mm. Uh, I mean, does he ever have like Jack Nine, Jack Ten? I mean, Jack Nine maybe not, but Jack Ten. I mean, we three bet the flop, bet called, and then check raised on this four straight board. I think three betting uh, two pairs here would be spewy by him. I mean, we don't know a lot about him. Let's assume he's a tag for the sake of argument. Mm -hmm. You know, assume let's let's say this is you versus me, and we both respect each other, and we hand read okay. I wouldn't be three betting two pair here, mm -hmm. unless somehow I had two pair and two diamonds or something, which doesn't seem very likely. So, yeah. I mean, should should he even be three betting a set here? It's a bit. Hmm. I mean, I, I wouldn't be able to stop myself from three betting a set, but but should he be range yeah. much straight 100 percent of the time? Well, it's I mean it's weird for him, isn't it? Because it's uh, as I said, you know, how many eights are in my range? I've got like ace eight, ace. I mean, ace eight suited, pocket eights, and like I mean, the only hands I'm, uh, the only hands I would raise this turn here if I were you, if I had turned a set of nines. Yeah. Uh, but other than that, it's pretty much set of nines or straights. Hmm. I mean, agree, disagree, what do you think? I'm trying, I mean, because the thing is, would, I don't would think like I'd, I, I don't think I'd ever call, you know, just call, a, I mean, would I ever just call a set of 10s on the floor? I don't think so. No, uh, I don't think you try and check call, check, raise on this board texture. I mean, that's well, it wasn't check, raise, because I led out and he raised me, so it, okay, so, you know, bet, that, call, check, would I bet call, yeah, check, raise course. with a 10 or, with 10s or jacks? No, I mean, you wouldn't. You wouldn't double donk because you would just bet three bet lead the turn for the same action with more money in the pot. I mm. mean, you wouldn't risk a free card on this turn with a set on this board texture. So I think we can sort of eliminate sets from your range. So obviously you're saying the nine improved your hand, mm. meaning you have either pocket nines or a straight. This is fun. Huh? We're getting yeah. way into it now. Okay. <laughs> Which basic? I mean, so what we're looking at him is, does he have, uh, I mean... From his, I mean, we're basically screaming that we've got the chat rose. Basically, screams we've got an eight. Is what you're saying? Is what you're saying here? Yeah, we've right. got a, we've got a straight, pretty much. We've got a set of nines or a straight, and he's saying, "I, I don't see the care." Yeah, and I don't care. Yeah. I want to kind of think our turn bet might. Wow, this is so sick to say that it's like we have a straight. Okay, I mean, are we overthinking it? Are random people at this limit just going to go nuts here with aces sometimes? I mean, maybe Potential. I'm overthinking. He might just go. I mean, as I say, he might have. He might have a set of. He might have a set of sevens or something like that. You never know, and just be Let's going. Assume that we're giving him a little too much credit. I mean, 
He he is using the zeros and the ones and the threes in his name. Um, yeah. No, I'm I'm just being mean now. Uh, <laughs> um, let's let's go ahead and throw in the the random spew weird aggressive factor, and and say that that kind of cancels out the whole hand reading thing we just talked about. Not cancel it out, but kind of you know weighs it uh, equally weighs it on the other side. And since and, and say that turns about neutral then. Yeah, and since we're and since we're at the end of the video, I've got to spew at least at some point. Oh yeah, we have to add in the video spew equity. Yeah. So uh, I have a good point. We should probably we'd six bet this turn if we could just for the video's sake. Yeah. Get him to lay down king queen because he thinks he's getting free rolled by king queen of diamonds. <laughs> uh, what uh, are you doing? But here's the, here's the thing. Are you check calling board pairing rivers? Are oh, you bet God. calling rivers? Uh, honestly, I, I know at the moment we, we never really formulate these river plans as well as we should. We just start mashing the button, you know. Because we've also uh, built this enormous pot, haven't we? So now by uh, by capping the turn. I so. don't really. I mean, diamond rivers, like that's kind of stupid, you know. Yeah. Like every now and then he has some combo with diamonds, so. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> you didn't think I was all over you about this hand like like this, did you? No. Kind of lulled you into. A Sense of security. Yeah, false sense of security. Yeah. Um, I, I think, you know, I think uh, the average random will spew here more than he should. Yeah. So, I mean, the thing is, if he raises the river on me, is he ever bluffing? If he if he call, I mean, I've capped the turn. It's you know, after weird all the actions, he, I mean, does a twenty five? I mean, he seems fairly taggy from what we've seen. It's like does a does a tag here ever call a three bet pre flop, check raise the flop, bet three bet the turn, and then check and then raise the river with a bluff? No, I mean, but like especially if the board I, pairs or the flush comes in. Well, that's why I'm almost wondering about this turn play yeah. because I always feel a little uncomfortable when the correct line ends up being something like cap turn check call river you know mm. like it means some weird somewhat wrong amount of action went in somewhere yeah. you know range wise whatever okay like on a brick deuce here we're like betting and crying calling a race you know mm. on a on a paired a, a board pairing river we're like check cry calling right on a diamond river what are we check cry calling or like bet cry calling like we we're, we're not like jamming the river obviously yeah I don't know. I mean, let's yeah. see what the river. Let's ro let's have the river roll off. I think let's yeah, go let, for the river and just let's have the worst guy in the <laughs> deck <laughs> ever. Wow, just open fold. Oh my gosh. I mean, check and cry call is about it now, right? Yeah. I mean, I think that's probably the line I should have taken, but it was. Uh, oh, don't say it ain't so, boomer. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like stick that stick that bet in there. You know. Um, oh, Bank and just calls with the immortal nuts. Uh, I mean, not the, he's afraid we have a set, obviously. Yeah, I think that I think he's read us for either a set or some kind of unbelievable spew on the. Uh, I mean, he's he's basic. We're basically assigning each other about the same ranges. You know, yeah. he hates that river card for all the diamonds that got there and all the sets. So. Yeah. Uh. Wow, pretty sick hand. I think the only thing I really... I mean, the turn we waffled on... Not waffled, but we go way back and forth on the turn, but it's not a big deal. Uh, it might be slight spew, but... The only thing on the river is I would probably check call the river. Yeah. Or, I mean, bet fold. <laughs> that bet fold getting 19 to 1. I mean, the thing is, it might be it might be the... It might be the better play. I mean, he's. And what does Bedfold get value from, though? Like pocket queens. Like, Pretty much, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like pocket queens, kings, aces, and like jack ten that he went nuts with. You know, that's basically yeah, we're, we're about down it. To, like three hand combos. <laughs> you know, we're down into like the minutia of limit hold'em. Yeah. I think I'd probably check and cry call this river. Uh, it worked out for us somewhat here on this river card. Uh, not getting raised. I don't think he can raise this on the river. I would probably be hard. I would probably just call and hate life. I think, I think he's pretty much heartbroken on the river, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. You could check race the river. That'd be pretty epic. <laughs> yeah, it's I like, I've, come, I've come this far. Might as well go that one step <laughs> further. I mean, it's not really a spew unless you check race cap the river as a bluff. Like, let's be honest, Boomer. Yeah. You really, uh, you didn't go as far as you could have here. It <laughs> didn't go far enough. But. I think this is a pretty sick hand. This is a good hand to end the video on. I mean, once I see this river roll off, I'm check calling because, you know, screw him, right? But yeah. uh 
given that you kind of had the bloodlust in your eyes and you were like, oh my god, straight, you were probably just... You probably hit the bet button before you even saw the river card. Really, yeah, right? I mean, if you, yeah. if you, if anyone who was paying attention, it was just a snap bet at that time, which you know, yeah, should have. I uh, sometimes put my hand up in front of the screen and hit the bet button because I don't want the scary river card to prevent me from value betting. Yeah. Uh, then I look back and I see the options are fold, call, or raise, and I'm like, oh god, he raised me. And then I look and it's always the worst river card in the deck. Yeah, I mean that is the worst river card in the deck without a doubt, pretty much, isn't it? I mean, yeah. or like in the jack of diamonds, maybe. Yeah. Because then the the overplayed Jack X gets there too. Yeah, just uh, Jack Jack two pair. Just for extra value. Uh, wow, pretty epic hand. A good hand to end on. Uh how are we doing for time and stuff? Well I mean it doesn't matter because we're near the end. Yeah. Any thoughts or comments on this video overall? Part I, two? I think it's been uh, I think this video has been quite fun. I think I don't think I played as well in this half of the session as I did in the first half. I um, think I made a couple of a uh, couple of rather basic errors in the uh, certainly on the right-handed table. I think it may have been because I was, you know, sometimes if you multi-table, you can sort of get drug, drug, dragged towards one table. Uh, I think that was happening on the left hand on the left-hand table. Don't know if that's the uh, don't know if that was the case at all. It's been a couple of weeks since I played this session. It might be that you just concentrate that little bit more on one table. And I was just a bit. Uh, you know, wasn't paying as yeah. much attention as I should have done on the right-hand table. I mean, I, mean, I, I am going to, I mean, reassure you a little here. You weren't playing badly. You know, I think you have a solid, like, a, I mean, solid, somewhere between solid and huge edge on these guys. Uh, you had a couple, this is a cooler hand, and you had a couple gross decisions where you, like, got stuck in there with pair and draw combinations. But uh, I think over, I mean, I'm very happy with your play overall here. And, uh... This has been a really fun video. I mean, we've gotten to just kind of really joke, and uh, I really am going to explore these uh, these brand marketing opportunities as far as getting like a Coca-Cola avatar or something. I really think there's some potential here. I'll stick my new car Deuce. up there. That'll work. <laughs> yeah, Deuce's Cracked Energy Drink, or, you know, I say, hang on a sec, uh, I've got to tune my motor, and I, like, play a clip of a of car engine revving or something right yeah. in the video. I, uh, I'm weird, you're weird. That's why we make a good coaching team, I think. Yeah. Uh, why don't we call this a video and uh, guys we really appreciate your time hanging out and watching and if any of you have gotten this far uh, there's a special bonus prize waiting for you just kidding but we will see you in the threads and see you on the forums uh, for Boomer this is BBB for Deuces Cracked thanks for watching signing off <laughs>